Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at how we can send live property updates to our backend without actually having to perform some action or clicking on a button. So here I have a simple search bar that I have built using what we have learned so far. So I'll show you guys my code. I have a simple component with a search property and then in the view, I'm basically returning a bunch of users and I'm doing a simple uh, ver search using this dot search, right? So very simple stuff. And on my component itself, over here, <laughs> that's my second component. I basically have a wire model on my search box. Okay, so this is what we have learned so far. And then I have a button that says wire click update. And at the bottom, I have my loop of all the users. Okay, so I'm just going to be mainly focusing on our input here. Now, the way you, by default, LiveWire only sends updates when you click on a button. And we can kind of test this right now, actually. I'll open up the developer tools. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to search for Puff. So I have a table with like thousands of users. I'm going to say Puff. Nothing is happening. Okay. So the only way I can send updates is if I click on the search button, which has a wire click on it. Okay. Or you have wire submit on a form. I click on it and boom, we immediately send the request. As you can see, update. And it is telling LiveWire that we want to update search to prof, right? However, for a search bar, you sometimes don't want to, the user to click on a button. You want it to happen as they type in or after they finish typing in. So let's go ahead and learn how we can do that. Now, it's actually very easy to do. Instead of wire model, you can do wire model live, And that's all you have to do. And this basically makes it so LiveWire sends updates as the user is typing in. So I'm going to go ahead, reload and type prof and boom as you can see it just happened that's just one additional word and we can also test this in our network uh, i'm gonna delete that we get an update i type p we get an update r o f so it works just like that i'm gonna say jesse and as you can see it is sending a bunch of requests so all you have to do is add wire model dot live now, this works very fine. However, there is one potential issue, and that is, as you can see, guys, we are sending a lot of requests to our server, okay? So I'm going to search for Jesse again. That, that, that's like, I don't know, six or seven requests. So if you want to minimize the number of requests you send, there are two ways, actually three ways you can do it. So the first one is by using something called vagarmodel.live.blur. And the name kind of tells you what it does. Basically, it will send an update request when the input is blurred. So right now it is active. When I click out, it's kind of blurred. That's when LiveWire will go ahead and send the request. So we can go ahead and try again. Obviously, we get one for the loading of the component. I'm going to click on it. So now it's active. I'm going to type a Jesse. Still no requests. And again, we haven't searched for Jesse yet. We got Lita here. I click out of it and we send the request, as you can see. So that's what uh, wire live model blur does. It sends a request when you blur the input is blurred or you click outside of it. Now there is another one called debounce. Okay. Now with debounce, you can basically define some sort of time frame. So I'm gonna say maybe 300 milliseconds. And what debounce does is it waits for the user to stop typing, and sends a request, whatever time frame you define, x times milliseconds after they stop typing. So let's go ahead and test debounce now. I'll reload the page and just pay attention. Obviously, we're not sending anything. I'm going to say Jesse one. Yep. So it basically the request was sent after I stopped typing. If I continue typing, as you can see, no request is being sent. I stop typing. Boom, we send the request. So that is how debounce works. And I personally usually use debounce myself either debounce 300 millisecond or debounce, maybe 100 millisecond is also good. That might be a bit better. So that's debounce. But sometimes if you have an, you know, an app and in your application, you like the search to happen as the user is typing in, or maybe you have like a YouTube search bar and you want to recommend what other users have searched, something like that. There is an alternative called a throttle. Okay. So uh, basically instead of debounce, go ahead and replace that with throttle. So I can say this. And it again accepts a time, but the difference between this is it's basically like you define a minimum interval between your requests. So even if the user is still typing in, it will send a request, but it will wait, let's say hundred milliseconds between each request. Now for this one, I'm probably going to make it like 
200 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and test throttle. Again, with debounce, as I was typing in, we got no requests, but let's try with throttle. As you guys, I'm still typing a lot, but as you can see, it is still sending requests as I'm typing it in, okay? And I hope I don't have a typo here. No, it is working. So I'm going to make this 200 a bit longer because I think it's very short. Let's make it 500 and let's try again. Now, as you can see, it is taking a while. Like that's like 500 milliseconds between each request. Okay. And you can look at the waterfall as well. And that's basically how throttle works. So it's up to you guys which one you want to use depending on your application. Obviously, we don't have any search results for what I typed, but either a debounce or throttle will work just fine. Blur sometimes is also useful. But that's one of the, you know, you have all three options uh, at your disposal and you, can, you are free to use whichever you like, depending on your application. And that's it, guys, for live updates in LiveWire. So it's primarily useful for building search, box, search bars. I don't think I have used it for anything else. You can also use it for a uh, live validation. So as the user is typing in, you get validation. That also works if you would like to do it. And yeah, that's it, guys, for live updates. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And I appreciate it if you guys subscribe so you get notified of the latest video updates. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.